Okay. We're going to factor by grouping. In particular, we're going to factor by grouping four-term polynomials. Let's begin. Here's the method. I guess I should do this in blue. One, two, three, four. There are four terms here. You put the first two terms in parentheses and the second two terms in parentheses and you leave this plus sign in the middle and you don't forget to write it. It's very important that that plus sign stay there or you'll think you're multiplying and you'll get the whole wrong answer. Okay, here we go. I am going to factor this, these two terms in this set of parentheses by GCF. So this is y times 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 y. And I need more room, don't I? Of course I do. Minus 9 times y times y times y times y times y times y times y. Now, there should be eight y's multiplied by each other here. Yes, there are. And there should be seven y's here. Notice that both terms contain seven y's. I'm going to put a circle around the seven y's here and the seven y's here. So the GCF is y to the seventh power. What's left, which is what we do now, See, let's mark that. Here's a leftover right there, a y, and a leftover minus 9. Those are my leftovers. y minus 9. Now we go back. And do the same thing with the second set of terms, y minus 9. I have to find a GCF, but there is no GCF. But there is a GCF. 1 times y is y, and 9 times 1 is 9. There's always a 1 GCF. 1 is the GCF. And we're left with the leftovers. Y minus 9. Now look at this. Isn't this great? Y minus 9 matches Y minus 9. Y minus 9 is the GCF. I write it down once. Y minus 9, and then I write the leftovers. Y, plus, y to the 7th power plus 1. P 
piece of cake. Ah, but you better make sure you didn't make a mistake. Remember polynomial multiplication from last semester? Or whenever you took Algebra 1 or beginning Algebra? I'm not going to FOIL these because FOIL is frowned on now. There are different styles in mathematics. If you remember how to FOIL, please feel free. However, I am going to do this by what's called distribution. I'm going to multiply these binomials. This is a binomial and this is a binomial by distribution. Here's what I do. I take the first term in the first set of parentheses and I write it down. And then I write the second set of parentheses y to the seventh plus one. And then I take the second term minus nine and multiply it by the second set of parentheses y to the seventh plus one. Cool. Now, I distribute y times y to the seventh is y to the eighth, and y times plus one is plus y, and minus nine times y to the seventh is minus nine y to the seventh, and minus nine times positive one is minus nine, and I'm leaving out my equal sign. All right, now all I have to do is write this in proper descending order. y to the eighth minus nine y to the seventh plus y minus nine. And this is exactly what I originally started off with, so that tells me I'm correct. Remember, you can always go back to the, to the beginning of the video. Let's do this again. I take the first two terms and I put parentheses around them. And I take the second two terms and I put parentheses around them. Then I factor the first set of parentheses by GCF and the second set of parentheses by GCF. And I am careful to not forget my plus sign. All right, here we're going to have S times S times S minus two times S times S. Over here, I will have four times s minus two times four. Now, we have three s's here and two s's here, so both of these terms contain two s's. That's S squared, which is the GCF. And the leftovers are S minus 2. Copy down your plus sign and do not lose it. Oops, need more room. Okay, you can probably see very clearly here that each of these terms contains a 4. So 
So 4 is my GCF. The leftovers are S minus 2. So, I write the GCF. Now, S minus 2 is the GCF because over here I have an S minus 2, and on the other side of the plus sign, I have an S minus 2. So, S minus 2 is the GCF, and the leftovers are S squared plus 4. Now I'll multiply these to make sure I get back what I started with. S minus 2 times S squared plus 4. I take this S and I multiply it by S squared plus 4. Then I take the minus 2, and I multiply it by s squared plus 4. Then I distribute. s times s squared is s to the third. s times plus 4 is plus 4s. Minus 2 times s squared is minus 2s squared. And minus 2 times positive 4 is minus 8. So now I'll rearrange these so I write them in descending order. s to the third minus 2s squared plus 4 s minus 8, and I'll put my equal signs here. Yes, this is exactly what I started off with. Got it right. We move on. Now again. I put parentheses around the first two terms. And because this is a minus sign, it goes with the 7. I'll put parentheses around those two terms. And then, very important, there's a plus sign in the middle. So this is what I've got right now x to the third plus 2x squared plus negative 7x plus negative 14. You're going to see why it's important I do that. Over here, we've got an x to the third and an x squared, and by now you've probably noticed the pattern that when you have two variables of different powers, the GCF is going to be the variable with the lower power. That is, the x's are the same. Of course, they have to be the same. x squared is the GCF of this uh, set of terms. Now, the leftovers are going to be, I suppose, I should write this out more carefully. Oops, pencil. All right, now, let's do this. Let's be good. x times x times x plus 2 times x times x plus 
Now, here we have to remember that when your leading term, leading coefficient rather, the number in front of the highest degree term, where this is degree one and this is degree zero, your GCF is going to have to be negative. So we'll have negative seven times x plus negative 14 equals negative seven times positive two. It also equals positive seven times negative two, but we need a negative seven. So this is going to be positive two times negative seven. Now we go back and we find our GCF. Both of the first term, that is both of the terms in the first set of parentheses, contain two x's, x times x, which is x squared. And the leftovers are x plus 2. Plus, don't forget that middle plus sign. In the second set of parentheses, both terms contain a negative 7. That's my GCF. My leftovers are x plus positive 2. Now, we have this multiplication going on on the left of x and this multiplication going on on the right of x which technically makes these, this a term and this a term. And both of these terms contain x plus two. x plus two is now the GCF. x plus two, and then the leftovers are x squared minus seven. Now, x plus two times x squared minus seven. Bring down this x times x squared minus seven plus two times x squared whoop, minus seven. This is x to the one times x to the two. And if you remember, when you multiply like bases, you add the exponents. One plus two is three minus x to the 1 times 7 is 7x, plus 2 times x squared, plus 2 times minus 7 is minus 14. Again, let's write this in descending order. x to the 3rd plus 2x squared minus 7x minus 14. And indeed, that is what we started with. Yay, so we're right. This is our factorization of that. Now, one more problem, which is really close to the problem we just finished. I'm going to come down here and write three 
s to the fourth plus 12 s squared plus negative 7 s squared minus plus negative 28. Got to do it because the leading coefficient in this set of parentheses is negative. Therefore, we have to pull a negative GCF out of this set of parentheses, a negative 7 to be exact. Okay, over here, we have 3 times S times S times S times S plus 3 times 4 times S times S plus negative 7 times S squared plus negative 28 equals negative 7 times positive 4. So let's write this as 4 times negative 7, just so the 4 can be close to the plus. Makes life easier. All right, let's check these terms out. Both of these terms in the first set of parentheses contain 3s. And both of the terms in the first set of parentheses contain s times s. So 3s squared is my GCF. The leftovers are s times s, which is s squared, plus 4. Plus Negative 7 is the GCF. Both terms contain a negative 7. So I'll write that in front, negative 7. Parentheses, the leftovers, s squared plus 4. Isn't that beautiful? So I write parentheses x squared plus 4 times 3s squared minus 7. And that's my answer. Now let's see if I have room. Yeah, I'll do this. s squared times 3s squared minus 7 plus 4 times 3s squared minus 7. s squared times 3s squared is 3s to the 2 plus 2, which is 4. And s squared times minus 7 is minus 7s seven squared plus 4 times 3 times s squared is 12s squared. And 4 times minus 7 is minus 28. Now, look at this. We can combine two terms. Oh, dear. But first... Look at that. We could have started off with 5s squared and then split it apart 
into 12s squared minus 7s squared. That's what we're going to do next. Hint, hint. Spoiler alert. But right now, 3s to the fourth, let's write it the way it is up there, plus 12s squared. minus 7s squared, minus 28. And that is indeed what we started with. So this is factoring by grouping. We have four terms. We factor by putting the first two terms in parentheses and the second two terms of in parentheses and making sure there is a plus in the middle. And don't forget your plus. Talk to you later. Bye-bye.